Hey friends, thanks for joining me. Today we need to look at the angle grinder and how to use it safely and productively. All right friends, so this is an angle grinder. It grinds with a disc. Now these discs, you can get a different number of them and different types of them. This one is a grinding disc. It has the grinding surface here flat. It is not a cutting disc. They do make cutting discs. Those are very thin. They're meant to cut on the edge. This is a grinding disc. It's meant to grind on the flat part here. So you don't want to interchange. You don't want to use a grinding disc or try to do a cutoff operation because you can break these. And if there's a chunk out of this, it can become very dangerous and it could actually um, break apart and send pieces flying. So along with that, when we use these, we have to protect ourselves. These are a very powerful tool. They can send sparks pretty far. So what we need is absolutely safety glasses. Always need those. We also need a face shield. Something you can wear to where sparks aren't going to be thrown in your face. Also, I always like to put my earbuds in and then sometimes I even use muffs too. Most of the time, buds, earbuds that um, stop sound from getting in are enough for me. I like to try to protect as much hearing as I have left because it's not as much as I used to have. So protect your hearing. And then when you're working with an angle grinder, one of the biggest things you need to be aware of is where the sparks are going that you're throwing from your project because sparks will be flying from this metal that you're grinding. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grind this a little bit and I'll show you how sparks will fly off a certain way and you can position the grinder to where it's not gonna be thrown in a dangerous position. So I just did a little grinding and the sparks went from here all the way around back to here. So how I positioned my grinder on that steel, I could make the sparks go in a certain direction. What I do not want to do is throw sparks on another student, a person that's got their back turned. I don't want to throw sparks on an acetylene tank or maybe a little propane tank or on something else that's flammable, maybe a a piece of uh, wood or a bunch of sawdust or whatever that may be, I want to position myself and the grinder so I'm throwing the sparks in a safe direction so I won't create a dangerous uh, situation for myself or somebody else. So that's one of the big things. Position yourself, position the grinding so that way you're throwing the sparks in a safe direction. Many times, I'll even get one of those red curtains and position it so I'm throwing the sparks against that. And that's perfectly acceptable. You can throw all kinds of sparks against those curtains. It's not going to hurt anything. We just want to be aware of what we're doing. Many times students get so wrapped up in what they're doing, they're not really paying attention and they're throwing sparks on another student or they're throwing sparks on the, the oxygen and acetylene tanks, which is super dangerous. So. Pay attention to what's going on. Look before you even start, where is a safe spot to throw the sparks? And if there's no spot, then we have to create one. Maybe we need to take your project outside. Maybe we need to set up some curtains so you can throw the sparks just into that curtain. But what we need to do is look at our project beforehand and then position ourselves and our project in a spot where we can be safe. All right, so back to the grinder. This angle grinder, this one is a DeWalt. It has a little safety switch right here. 
This one has a safety switch. In order to run this, you can't just push on that. You have to take this little button, push it down, and then you can start it. And as you just saw, as I turned it on, it has a lot of torque, and so it twisted. And so we have a handle to where you can have a, one hand on the handle, one hand on the trigger. Some angle grinders have a button where you can set them and they will keep running if your hands are off of this. I don't like to use that for new students because I want them to be able to control it with their hands. You can, um, you can do that, but then sometimes people forget and they'll just set their grinder down and it'll still be running. That's not really a safe situation for us. So let's try not to use that in our class, but sometimes you just need to use it if you're doing a lot of grinding. One of the other things on this is you can change this handle to the other side. If you're in a position where you need to get close on one side, you can turn this handle to the other side and then have two-handed action there too. You could also grab the, um, the body of the tool and you can use both hands there, but I highly recommend both hands so you can get a firm grasp on this and you can control it and it does not control you. The final thing to talk about is how to replace this disc. This has a blade lock, a spindle lock. When you push on this button, it'll have a certain spot and it locks that spindle. Then you take this piece and you remove it. Now most of these have a certain wrench that they have two little prongs in there. You stick it on there and turn it. This one is not with the tool. Someone took the, the um, tool off. I had it usually zip tied to here. Someone took it off and now it's not with there. So we have to actually use some um, crescent wrench um, or some channel lock pliers and then pop it off. Then you put a new disc on and you're good to go after you're tightening it back. But that's what is needed. You need the wrench and you need to use the spindle lock to lock that in place. So there you go folks, it's a pretty basic tool, but it's a super handy tool. The more care you use on this, the more you take care of it and treat it with respect, the longer it's gonna last and it's gonna be a really good tool for you for a really long time. Make sure to work safely folks while you're working hard because hard work is its own reward. And thanks for watching.